Okay, after my previous video of the base model Mac Studio, I was questioning where this fit into my workflow, especially since I have two other M1 machines here as well. I have the M1 MacBook Pro that I got when it originally came out, and then I have my work 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. My benchmark is going to be Premiere Pro with that eight minute sequence of multiple different frame rates and color grades and effects from multiple different cameras. The Mac Studio was able to export that complicated eight minute 4K sequence in Premiere Pro in two minutes and 38 seconds. That is the fastest render time I've ever had for a sequence of eight to 10 minutes, especially if it's that complicated. I was wondering how long it would take all of these machines to do the same thing, but I also wanna know how long it takes to start up Premiere Pro and then link all the assets of that really complicated sequence. And then more important to me than any of those metrics is how is the general playback in Premiere Pro? Because export times, it really doesn't matter because I can hit export and walk away. What really is going to make my workflow faster is fast performance when I'm editing. First up, let's talk about the Mac Studio since that one's fresh on my mind. Like I said, it exported that eight minute sequence in two minutes, 38 seconds. It was able to open up and link all of the assets in 30 seconds flat. But the most impressive thing is how it scrubbed through the timeline. It was able to scrub through the timeline at full resolution and it was able to play back full quality, no hiccups. It was also able to fast forward one time, no hiccups, and then times two with some very strange uh, intermittent drop frames, but it would fast forward, hang up on a frame, and then catch up and keep going, and then it wouldn't drop any more frames. Fast forwarding times two in Premiere Pro with that many assets at full quality is something that's really difficult, so I gotta give a lot of kudos to the Mac Studio. Now when it came to rewinding on the timeline is another thing that's very difficult for these machines to do for some reason. And the rewinding by one times, it played back flawlessly and that was very impressive because these other machines struggled with that. Spoiler alert. When I tried to rewind times two on that same timeline, that's when the Mac Studio immediately fell apart and it couldn't do it. Uh, it's impressive it was able to rewind for so long, times one, times two, it was just not able to do it. Let's go over to the 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. The 16 inch MacBook Pro was able to open and link all the assets of that eight minute sequence in 30 seconds. It was able to export the entire sequence in four minutes and nine seconds. That's impressive because I was stoked back in the day when an eight minute sequence took eight minutes to render. Now this takes four minutes to render. The Mac Studio took less than that even though. So uh, what was very interesting to me though was the scrub and playback quality. If you're just playing back normal regular footage, this computer can play back no problems at all. When you start introducing multiple levels of 4K A7S III footage and you add a grade to it, it can still play it back no problem at all. Fast forwarding once is no problem at full quality. Fast forwarding times two gave you a couple seconds of really fast quality and then it just fell apart though. It would lag and jump and it would try to catch up but to me it was just unusable at fast forwarding times two. Rewinding times one on the 16 inch MacBook Pro worked totally fine. Again, like the Mac Studio, when I rewinded times two, it completely fell apart immediately. If I was going to rewind, I would actually have to click and scrub the playhead backwards and then play from there. So um, this has been part of my workflow for years since all of my machines have not been able to rewind very well, but it was just worth noting. So moving on to the most interesting device. This is a very budget machine and I was able to pick up this machine refurbished for about 1200 bucks. So I was very interested to see how this stacked up against these higher end machines. Very interestingly, the M1 took 27 seconds to open our eight minute complicated sequence in Premiere Pro and link all the files and be completely loaded. That was very weird, I did it three times, I got 27 seconds each time. 
the M1 Max, Max Studio, took 30 seconds. The M1 Pro took about 30 seconds as well. But the cheapest, smallest screen, most affordable M1 took 27 seconds. Um, I'm not sure why it took so little time to do it. I cleared the caches, I tried it again, I still got the same results. It was very weird. That's about where the impressive things compared to these other machines stopped though. To export our eight minute Premiere Pro timeline, it took eight minutes and 35 seconds. That's about average to what I would consider an acceptable editing machine. But really more importantly, how does it deal with adding clips to the timeline, scrubbing through it, playing back, fast forwarding and rewinding? Playback was actually okay at half quality. At full quality, it couldn't hold up as well as these other machines could. But if you dropped it down to half quality, the M1 Air still handled our sequence pretty well. When it came to fast forwarding on the M1 MacBook Air, it took about 30 seconds to have fast forwarding times one to really start to get choppy and then it would catch up and then it would drop a couple frames and catch up. And it just really continued to do that. When I tried to fast forward times two at half quality, it would go for about 10 seconds and then just completely chop off and it would be just too laggy to go forward. When it came to rewinding, times one worked, but it only worked in half quality as well. When I did more than about 10 to 30 seconds, it would start to drop frames in very similar to the fast forwarding. It would drop frames, lag, try to catch up, and it just wouldn't really work. When I tried to rewind times two, it just didn't work at all. <laughs> if I was sitting down at a desk and I didn't have to get up and be portable, I would confidently be choosing the Mac Studio. The base level, entry level Mac Studio is still enough for me, maybe a little bit more SSD space if you can afford it. However, if you have to be portable like me, I absolutely love the 16 inch MacBook Pro the M1 Pro chip is still enough for me if I really load up a Premiere Pro sequence, I'll just find myself closing other things to have the absolute best performance and it's really not that bad. And if I need all the performance and not see any stutters, I can lower it to one half and those stutters are pretty much gone. So that's a really nice luxury. It is a little bit more expensive than the Mac Studio, but paying a premium for a really powerful computer that is portable and you can take anywhere with you is a really nice luxury. Let me know which of these devices you guys would be choosing in the comments down below. And if you haven't seen my Mac Studio review, I'll leave that on screen right now for you to check out. I just wanna say thank you guys for sticking around to the end and I'll see you in the next one.